الحمد للہ وسلاۃ وسلام علیہ نبی محمد و علیہ علیہ وصاحب وسلم ام بیر حب صف اللہ دی کوشچن واز ایس کین یو پلیز ایس سم ون وٹ ٹو ڈو اف اے پرسن بیکمز ٹرائڈ وتھ پورنوگرافی اینڈ ماسٹربیشن وٹ آر دا اسٹیپس ٹو ٹیک ٹو کلینز ون سیلف فرام دس ڈیزیز آئی ہیو امیٹڈ ہز نیم فردر I can attest that he is a brother who prays, reads Quran regularly, and is active in seeking knowledge. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ma ba'd. We've talked about this issue, uh, these issues extensively uh, in, in several uh, videos. And my advice is to uh, search, uh, do a, a channel search and find them. And also look elsewhere. Look to what other... students of knowledge and other people are saying about these uh, illnesses uh, and I say they are illnesses that they are spiritual illnesses and as you mentioned and I'll just be as brief as possible that's just some brief advice to summarize what we've talked about in the past and first and foremost fear Allah as much as you can it took a lot of it took a lot of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says all throughout the Quran it took a lot of Allah ta'ala and don't die in a step in a state of Islam so of course we all know those ayah and as you mentioned that this particular individual may Allah guide us in him and forgive us in him Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen is a person who reads the Quran and is active in seeking knowledge so that's the deal that the knowledge is not penetrating and making the impact it should have on the individual's atmal Because, as the Salaf used to say, Al-Amul Thamarat Al-Ilm, that deeds are the fruits of actions. So that's first and foremost. So we know this sickness. We know that it's a sickness. But really, as far as advice, and as far as uh, dealing with this, is as taqwa is putting a barrier between you and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's one aspect of taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is... adhering to the commandments of Allah and avoiding his prohibitions that putting a barrier a physical barrier for the, that person meaning not being alone meaning that they should uh, uh, if they have a problem with the internet and, and which is probably the most prompt, predominant if not the 90% uh, way of pornography reaching then they need to put secure controls on their internet something you know adult Uh, screen, uh, screening or whatever what do they call like a a filter so they need to make some steps some legitimate steps for themselves to save themselves from that destruction because it will only lead to zina and as you already mentioned that they have an issue with masturbation because pornography it's, I can't imagine it's a difficult to tesour to make an image of someone who is not who does not masturbate who's afflicted with the pornography because pornography you've got to act upon that you're going to be stimulated and you're going to act on it either through that or either through zina wa'iyadu billah wa'iyakum min aqubatillah and so doing their best to be in it if they know that they are sick with the sickness that they need to have good husna suhbah to be in righteous company and finally really the ultimate thing that's going to make the difference uh, of course being in the environment of ahl al and being in the environment of husna suhbah with good companions is they will have to make a legitimate uh, decision to release themselves from it they have to truly want to and this is the most difficult and critical uh, aspect of it is that many people they don't really want to leave the sin they sort of do they feel sorrow and uh, they feel shame but they really don't want to leave the sin they are addicted to looking at websites they're addicted to looking at pictures they're addicted to the even the social community of evil the circle of evil that now there is webcamming uh, adult swinging all these kind of things Allah. But people become addicted and it becomes a social circle. There are so many women who find their authenticity through their sexuality and through showing themselves, being voyeurs. By showing themselves, they now have a community of followers around the world who are sexually charged by them.
by showing themselves. And we already know all the rulings pertinent to that, that it's a great evil. But the reality is people are immersed in this evil and people find validation in this evil. And this sickness is predominant, is, is in our community as well. So we can't deny it. But we have to, uh, one of the, the steps, as I mentioned, is that a person has to be determined to leave it. And that's a part of Toba. Another important, important point that I want to mention is also a halal bedil. That I think this is very, very important. Because this addiction is probably unlike substance abuse. And I'm not knowledgeable in, in either of them as far as uh, a science and as far as those who are counselors and who study these issues. But I think the drug addiction is more physical and much more difficult to really leave. That, you know, people really get physically sick. Whereas the pornography, I believe, is easier to control. That... If there is a positive bedil, you know, meaning that there's a positive way of substituting that evil with something is good, then the person will be able to leave that. And, and Islamically, what that means is marriage. And if the person is a person who has one wife and they're struck with this sickness, then maybe they need two. They need a, a second wife to help them, to secure them, to anchor them like two pillars. And if it is a person who's not married, then they need to be looking to get married. They need to secure themselves and have a, a defense. And they need to look for someone who's actually going to help heal them. Because yes, we know some people are sick and they remain sick even if they get married. That they remain sick because they don't find the satisfaction they find. And that's very difficult as well. It's very difficult. We know the challenges because Islamically, we don't really get to know each other before marriage and we don't unlike the times of Jahiliyyah, for those who experience that, they know they've had all those kind of relations, you know, so they know about their partner, they know what they like, and they know what to look for if they want. But in Islam, we are restricted. So it's very important. That's why I mentioned another point, important point, and I mentioned this regarding marriage, is that people should also find people they're attracted to. That's very important. And they should strive in the marriage to maintain that attraction by the woman beautifying herself, taking care of herself physically, not letting herself go. So if that means a man who, if the man likes a woman who's fit, then she should take care of herself and try to be fit. If the man likes a woman who's bigger, then he, she should make herself strive to be bigger, I guess, if that's what is, is appealing. If a man likes a skin, you know, this and this. And likewise, do not think I'm ignoring you sisters, is that the man needs to take care of himself that he should strive to make be pleasing to his wife because we know sisters are also tested with this. So the man should try to make himself handsome. And part of that handsomeness, of course, is adhering to the book of Allah, the son of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and having the beard. Uh, a second part of that is also taking care of yourself, being fit, you know, and eating healthy, eating and drinking, and spiritually being healthy, putting good things into you, which is the book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and positive thoughts and khair, and leaving off the evil. And as we mentioned, eating good, eating organic if you can afford to do so, eating not eating poisonous foods, because poisonous foods poisonous products the you are what the, you eat, as they say. You know, that uh, this this comes out and it comes out in other ways, we don't even know how the how it changes our cells, and aside from the illnesses, but even the mental, and which affects even our spiritual. If we're always feeling sick, we're always feeling tired. That's going to affect our ibadah. So the body, the human body, is the you know, it's uh, it's one vessel, and we even have uh, evidence from the sharm. The Prophet ﷺ said, you know, mentioned about inafi jizid. Uh, and then the Prophet he said that in the body is a morsel of flesh if the if it is clean or healthy the whole body is healthy and if it is sick the whole body is sick verily it's the heart so going back to the topic getting the heart healthy by putting it good because pornography obviously breeds sickness and it manifests itself through sickness there's, there's no good that's going to come about it from about it 
and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure us all of our sins and our ailments, our physical, mental, and spiritual ailments. I mean, and make it easy for our brother to come back to Allah and away from that. Because a last point I want to mention is especially for the student of knowledge. And some of the Salaf used to say, you know, were mentioned, you know, that one of the reasons they didn't have excellent memories because of the sins and so with that being the case the person who does ma'asi the student of knowledge they're not going to get even if they fool the people and they get a little bit of knowledge they will limit themselves they will forget because when you're memorizing text and you're reading the quran and it's not penetrating your heart and then you go and spend 20 minutes watching uh, 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 you know, pornography and th those kind of things, it's going to eat away your good deeds and it's going to eat away your memory and eat away your talab al ilm As we said, al amal thamarat al ilm as the Salaf used to say, that uh, deeds are the fruits of knowledge. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with ilm al nafi, rizq al wa amal al mutaqabili wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.